For most people, money is just simply that, money. They go to work, they get paid, and then they exchange their money for goods and services at local shops and online retailers. And most people don't really have to worry about any other kind of currency than what they are paid with. But businesses, especially online businesses, need to handle currency on a global scale. At the heart of a global economy is this idea of an exchange rate. It's the value of one currency in another currency. And as you might expect, these exchange rates are in a constant state of flux. So if you plan on incorporating currency and exchange rate information in your applications, then you need the tools that will make it easy to work with that data. And that is where Exchange Rates API comes into play. Now this is a RESTful API that provides access to 170 global currencies, over 14,000 conversion pairs, historical and fluctuation data, and much, much more. And by using Exchange Rates API, you can incorporate almost any global currency in your applications with ease and without the headache of managing all of that information yourself. Now, you might ask yourself, is an API really going to help you manage and work with currency and exchange rates? Yes. Yes, it will, because Exchange Rates API is incredibly accurate. They source their information from a very broad base of commercial and financial institutions so that you can be sure that the data they provide you is incredibly accurate. And it's also very up to date because they collect that information within the 60 second market window. Now, your subscription level determines how often that information is refreshed. If you look at the pricing page, you will see that the free subscription has daily updates, and then it just gets better from there. Basic has hourly updates, professional has 10 minute updates, and then if you need up to date within the minute information, then the business plan is going to be for you. They support 170 global currencies and precious metals. So it's not just currency, but you can also get exchange rate information for gold and silver. It's also a very, very fast API because it's built by the people at API layer. They know how to build APIs and it's almost an instantaneous response. So as you will see in a few moments, whenever we make a request, we are going to get a response just like that. And every response is in JSON format. So no matter what language or platform you're using, you can easily consume the information and use it within your applications. Now we're going to spend just a little bit of time playing around with the API. Now granted, there's really not a whole lot that we can do with the free subscription. If we take a look at the pricing, uh, we can't even change the source currency. We can at least write the code and make it modular so that as we subscribe to one of these other subscriptions, then we could reuse that code and take advantage of other endpoints. So to make all of this work, we need to make HTTP requests from within a web page. And the only way that we can do that is if the web page is served over HTTP. So we need an HTTP server. And one of the easiest ones to get up and running uh, relies upon Node.js. Now, if you don't have Node.js, I highly recommend that you go ahead and install it because it is the only way that we can get access to NPM, which is what we use to manage our dependencies and our build processes and all of that stuff. So if you don't have it installed, go to nodejs.org, download the LTS version. The version number really doesn't matter as far as we are concerned. Just make sure it's the LTS version and install it. It's a very straightforward installation. Just take the defaults and you will be good to go. Now, the rest of the setup is going to be in the command line, and I've gone ahead and created a directory called exchange. You can call it whatever you want, but just create a directory and then CD into that directory, because here we want to initialize our project and we will do so with npm init. Now I'm going to use the Y flag so that it will plug in the default values for all of the options. And then we are going to install a nifty little thing called light server. 
This is a lightweight HTTP server that we are going to use to serve our HTML file. And we're going to save this as a dev dependency. It's a very simple installation. It just takes a few seconds and then we will be ready to jump into our code. Now you can use whatever code editor that you want. I use Visual Studio Code because it is the best code editor for JavaScript. And let's go ahead and go into package.json and we want to add an entry for our scripts because we want to fire up our web server and we can call that script serve and then the command is going to be simply light server and then we are good to go there so now we just need an html file and we will create a new file let's call it index.html. let's give it some html and then we just need to write some javascript now if we wanted to, to take a look at the documentation there are some code samples if we take a look there are javascript and php however the javascript examples use jquery and while that was popular many years ago it's not so much anymore i mean especially since we have the fetch api which makes it very easy to make http requests because after all one of the reasons we have jQuery is to make it easy to make HTTP requests. So we don't need to use jQuery. We will just use fetch. Now there is some setup that I want to go through just to make things a little bit easier down the road. So the first thing I want is a variable that contains the base URL so that we have this already set and we don't have to type it out a lot. So we can go to the three step quick start guide and in step two we have this endpoint and really all we need is just that base url and i'm going to save that in this url variable now i'm leaving off the trailing slash and you will see why here in a moment now for every single request that we make we have to include some query parameters the access key is required for every request and we could hard code that inside of the urls I don't want to do that. I hate doing that. So instead, we are going to have a function that is going to handle all of that for us because there is a type of object called URL search params. And all we have to do is pass in an object. The property names are the query parameter names that we want to use. And then the property values are the parameter values. So in this case, we would have access key and the value will of course be our access key so we can go back to the three-step quick start guide we can copy that access key and then plug that in here now this is a constructor so what we want to do is return new and then url search params and then we can pass in an object that has all of the other query parameters that we might need to include so all we have to do here is use the spread operator and then spread out that params obj and we will be good to go so the only endpoint that is available to us is the latest endpoint if we go back to the documentation and find latest rates endpoint there are two optional parameters the base currency which defaults to the euro and then the symbols that we wanted to include. Now, our first request, we're just going to make a default request and we're going to have a lot more information than we really need. But we do need to hit this latest endpoint. So we are going to have a function called get latest. And then we will accept some options that would be like the base currency or the symbols that we want to include. And then this is where we're going to make our actual request using fetch. And we are going to include the URL and then we will have the slash followed by the endpoint latest. And this is why I didn't want to include the slash in the URL because this is just my personal preference. But whenever I'm building a URL, I like to see the slash there. So again, that's just my personal preference. But we also need to include the query parameters and this is very simple all we have to do is call that params pass in the options that are provided to this function and there we go now every request is going to result in a json structure so it makes sense to go ahead and convert that json structure into an object that we can then use and why don't we just go ahead 
and pass that on to the console so that we can see that in the browser. And that's our code so that whenever we want to make a request for the latest rates, we can call get latest. Now we need to run our HTTP server. So we will say NPM run serve. That will do two things. It will fire up our server. It will also automatically open up our page in the browser. Let's pull open the developer tools and let's look at the console. And there we go. We have the response. We have the base, which is the Euro, the date of this request. We also have the timestamp of when all of this data was collected. Now, because we are using the free subscription, it is possibly old, but that's okay. If we take a look at the rates, we are going to have a very long list of rates because after all, there's 170 different currencies that are supported by the API. And we of course want to limit that. So we're going to go back to our code and we are going to pass in some options. So let's first of all, take a look at the documentation so that we can see what those options are. So we have base and we have symbols. So let's start with symbols. And let's say that we just want to include the US dollar, the Canadian dollar and the uh, British pound. So we will include symbols and then the actual symbols that we want. And the British pound was GBP. So if we save that, go back to the browser, we will have a much more manageable object. We still have the same basic information, such as the base currency, the date and the timestamp, but now our rates are only three. We have the Canadian dollar, the British pound, and then the US dollar. But let's say that we want to change the base currency. Well, we just need to go back to get latest and then include base. But this is going to result in an error because this is not supported in the free subscription. So if we go back to the browser, we see an error. Now, the error isn't necessarily that the request failed because technically it didn't. We made a request, we got a response, and the response is indeed coming back from the API. But the error is that the base currency access restricted. But once again, we can't change the base currency with the free subscription. However, this does highlight that even our errors are in JSON. So every request that we make is going to result in a JSON structure that we can then work with. Money makes the world go around. Now that's a cliched phrase, but it is very true. And it's difficult to keep track of not only the many global currencies, but their constant changes in exchange rates. But thankfully, Exchange Rates API makes it easy to integrate global currency, foreign exchange, and even historical data in your applications. I mean, thousands of developers already trust Exchange Rates API for its stability and reliability, as well as accurate and up-to-date data for their projects. You should too, so register for an account today.